So we've looked at adding and subtracting um, vectors. We've looked at multiplying them by a scalar, but we haven't looked at multiplying uh, them by each other, okay? Uh, it's just something we can't do. Uh, it's not going to give us anything if we do. It'll just give us numbers. It might appear to be a vector, but it's not actually going to give us something. However, we have an alternative, which is called the scalar product or the dot product, okay? Um, and this is when we kind of multiply two vectors together. Um, but more than anything else, this provides us with a means to calculate the angle between vectors. It's a strange uh, concept is the scalar product or the dot product. Um, and it's basically there to allow us to find the angle between two vectors. Okay, you often ask just for it individually. Uh, and there's two means at which to get the dot product. Um, but we need kind of um, one of them to help us with a formula for the other um, so that we can find the angle between them. Okay. So if A and B are two non-zero vectors with theta, which is the angle between their positive directions, then the scalar product is defined by this formula. Okay, uh, this formula is given in your form sheet, so you don't need to memorize this one, but you'll use it enough that you do. But it's written like that. A dot B uh, is equal to the magnitude of A times by the magnitude of B times by the cosine of the angle between them, but more importantly, the positive direction of them. And I'm going to explain this here. So we have two two vectors here, and uh, they are tail to tail, so to speak. In other words, um, the vectors kind of point away from the angle that we're trying to find. So that would be theta in the middle there. However, if we have a situation like this, this is not the same. This is not going to work in the same way. In other words, we're not going to find the angle that appears to be there. Okay. So that is not theta in the middle there. Um, and if you want to find it, if you're asked to find the angle between them in this case, then you have to do something different. Basically what you have to do, look at that, you have to slide that one down so that we do have them tail to tail. In other words, the um, angle that we'd find if we use this formula would be the angle on that side, okay? Say we wanted the angle that we had that we showed before, then we could still find it because obviously all we've done is we've shifted this down in a straight line, in which case the angle that we were looking at before over here would just be 180 minus the theta. But we've just got to be aware that when we're doing this, when we're using this formula, the angle that we're going to find is the angle that's between the positive directions of those vectors. Okay, Either one of these situations would work. We've just got to kind of manipulate it if we want to find something else. So for this first one, we want to calculate A dot B for these pairs of vectors, okay? So the magnitudes of A and B are two and three units respectively. So we can literally just shove this straight in a formula because we know the angle. What we're going to get onto further down the line is actually using this formula to find the angle, okay? But just getting used to the formula just now, A dot B or the dot product or the scalar product, whatever you want to call it, is this magnitude A times by magnitude B times by the cosine of the angle between the positive direction of those vectors. But that's any form of sheet, you don't need to memorize it. Uh, magnitude of A is 2, magnitude of B is 3, cosine of 30 is the angle between them. Uh, obviously, this brings in exact values. We know the cost of 30 is root 3 over 2, so we can simplify that to 6 root 3 over 2, or 3 root 3. However, when we have a situation like this, we've got to pay attention to the arrows. So if we're going to find the dot product of these two, it's not going to be, uh, the, we can't use this angle. Okay, we have to have the angle that's between the positive direction of the two vectors. So we need to know the uh, magnitudes, fair enough, but I also need to know this angle here, cos 135. So what's happened here is I've moved this vector down okay, to this point here, in which case it's this angle that I'm going to be finding, okay, because it's the dot product, which gives uh, the angle between the positive direction of uh, the vectors. And if this whole angle along the bottom is obviously 180 degrees, and I know that this right-hand side is 45 degrees, and the other left-hand side will be 135 degrees. Cos 135, again, using your exact values, is basically in the second quadrant. It's in the sine quadrant, in which case cos is negative, but it's negative cos 45. Cos 45 is 1 over root 2, so it's negative 1 over root 2 times by the 3 and the 5 gives us minus 15 over root 2. So just be careful with situations like that. You've really got to pay attention to the diagram and where the vectors are pointing. Uh, yeah, I did it again over there. There you go. I don't know why I've done it in that order. Right, if you wanted to know the proofs, uh, that's the proofs there. They're in your textbook. But this basically at the bottom is the other version of um, the dot product. And we can use this to find the dot product. Or more importantly, we can combine it with the previous formula in order to find an angle between two vectors, okay? 
but either one of these will work. It just depends on what you have in the question in the first instance. What this one does is it uses the components, okay? So if the vectors are given to us in component form, like it is at the bottom here, whoa, okay, then we can use this version of the formula to help us find the dot product, okay? But more often than not, what's going to happen is you're going to have two vectors uh, in component form, and you want to find the angle between them. So you have to basically substitute this whole formula into the formula that we just looked at in order to find the angle. But we'll look at that next, okay? So we're going to calculate the scalar product of these pairs of vectors, and you just got to be careful. Again, I mentioned it earlier, uh, vectors can be written in a number of different forms. This is written in terms of the unit vectors, i, j, and k, but we can just rearrange it to the form that we like using it in, okay? So P would just become 1, 1, minus 2, and Q, we've got to be careful here, is 0, 1, 6. There's no I's there, okay? So there's nothing in the X direction, so it's 0, 1, 6. In which case, when we put this into our formula, it's going to be the kind of the X components multiplied by the Y components multiplied by the Z components, and then all added together. Yeah, that didn't really make sense. The X components multiplied together, and then added to the Y components multiplied together, and then added to the Z components multiplied together. So 1 times 0 plus 1 times 1 plus minus 2 times 6 is 0, 1, and a minus 12, which is minus 11, okay? So don't worry about what that means because it's, it's, it's a bit of a, a strange one what it actually means. But as I say, the actual um, number is going to help us find the angle between two vectors, okay? Well, that one's all done for me, okay? Uh, anyway, if A is the point 3, blah, 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 calculate A, B, dot A, C. So the point is here, okay, I have them as coordinates, and if I want to find A, B, dot A, C, I first of all need to find the vectors A, B, and the vector A, C. And we've done that numerous times already. A, B is just B minus A, A, C is C minus A. Make sure you get your coordinates in the right place, or make sure uh, yeah, you're writing them as position vectors, and then get the two vectors A, B, and A, C, and then pop them into the formula. Okay, it's going to be 1 times minus 3 plus 6 times minus 2 plus minus 5 times 4. Be careful with your negatives. Add them all together, you get minus 35. Right, so this is the big one. This is the kind of the main question you'll get uh, virtually 80% of the time in, uh, in an exam. It's calculating the angle between vectors, okay? So combining the two formulas together, as I've mentioned, will allow us to find a formula that will find... Um, the angle between them, okay? So if we rearrange that first one, okay, we can rearrange it to cos theta will equal a dot b divided by the magnitude of a times by the magnitude of b. And then basically what we can do is we can substitute in that whole first formula into the top half of our equation, okay? And allowing us to find the angle between two vectors, okay? Uh, this one's not written for you, but the, uh, because the first two are written for you in your uh, formula sheet, it's very easy, obviously, to combine the two of them together. Okay, um, but you've just got to bear in mind that theta represents the angle between the positive direction of vectors A and B. Often doesn't have to uh, uh, involve any change in the questions, but you've just got to double check it before you kind of progress with this. Okay, so this is the kind of question you'll get. Let me calculate the angle between the vectors U and V. So the first thing you want to do, and you will get a mark for this, is write it in terms of the letters that you have. Okay. So this one's slightly easier. This has taken us one step further on. If you combine the last two examples that we actually looked at, you could have three points here. And if you had three points, you'd have to actually find vectors first of all and then do all of this. But we have the vectors here, so it's not too bad. But the cos of theta will be u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times by the magnitude of v. Okay, we can find all of those things. Um, the mag or u dot v is just from our formula sheet. Okay, 4 times 3 plus 2 times 1 plus 5 times by 2. That gives us 24. So that's the top half of our fraction. The bottom half, what this means is magnitudes. And you just got to remember this is just Pythagoras. Okay, so it's the square root of all of them squared and added together. So the magnitude of u will be the square root of 4 squared, 2 squared, 5 squared, all added together, which is 45. Square root of, uh, well, sorry, the magnitude of v would be 3 squared, 1 squared, and 2 squared added together, square root, which is root 14, in which case in our calculator, and this will virtually always be in the calculator because obviously this is quite a difficult thing to do. But there are ways, now obviously you've dealt with uh, exact values, there are ways of making this an exact value question, in which case it could be a non-calculator question. So look out for that. 24 over the square root of 45 times by root 14. Be very careful how you put this in your calculator. Okay, there's that wee fraction button that you might want to use to make sure that the root 14 stays on the bottom as well. Okay. Or you can do root 45 times by root 14 separately and then do 24 divided by that. But just be very, very careful that everything, the root 45 and the root 14, are on the bottom of your fraction. 
And then obviously if we're trying to find theta, then it's the inverse cos. If you just leave it at this stage, after this stage, you're going to get a number that's really, really, really small, in which case, it kind of, if it's an angle, the chances are it's not quite right. So we're trying to find theta here. We're not trying to find the cos of theta, in which case theta will equal the inverse cos of all of this. When you shove it in a calculator, it works out about 17 degrees, or 17.0 degrees to one decimal place. Okay. This one is a bit more complicated, though. This is where it involves, as I say, points, and you have to work out a few things first. And this is generally done in a few stages, and it's worth lots and lots of marks. DOABC is a pyramid. We have the point A, we have the point B, and we have the point D. F divides DB into ratio 1, 2. Find the coordinates of F first of all, and then find the size of angle BOF. Okay, right, that's the angle that's drawn in red there. But obviously we need to find the coordinates of F first of all using the ratios. It's combining lots of things together, okay? So what we have here, and this is basically just going back to and drawing one line. We know the line DB and we know that F splits it in the ratio 1 to 2, okay? In which case F will be a third of the way along uh, from D to B. You can do this in a shorter method, okay? If you've got the points there, I showed you the shorter method earlier. Okay, however, here I'm doing it by the long method. We're finding the vector dB, we're finding a third of that vector, and then we're going to add it on to the point D. Okay, so D is the point 639 and DF is 21 minus 3. Okay, so I'm basically just adding them together at the end of this all. Okay, in which case I'm getting 846. Okay, so remember this is all to do with position vectors. Okay, I've basically found there's a, a origin over here. I know the position vector of D, okay, that's basically the vector 639, if I write that uh, vertically. I've now found DF using this process, 2, 1, minus 3. So if I want to find the position vector of F, I can add them together and then flip it around to give me a coordinate of F. But as I said earlier, you can do this much quicker. You can just find a third of the way between the points D and F or D and B, okay? Either way, F is the point 846. Right, so if we go back, what we're trying to find is this angle here. So I now know the vector uh, OB because it's just a position vector and I can work out uh, and I have the vector OF, again, just a position vector. Now, if I want to find the angle, I've double checked, first of all, that it's OB and OF that I have, in which case it is the positive direction of those vectors. First thing I want to do is write it in terms of the letters. So there's no point just writing down the formula that's given to you in your formula sheet. You want to write it in terms of your letters. You do lose a mark if you don't do this. So what we're trying to find is cos theta, and cos theta equals um, the dot product of OF and OB divided by their magnitudes. So write that out nice and clearly. OF is 846, as we just found out. OB, we know the point B, so we know the position vector OB, uh, it's, which is 1260. And then we can just bash on with all these different stages. OF dot OB using our formula sheet is 8 times 12 plus 4 times 6 plus 6 times 0. 96, 24 and 0 gives us 120. That's the top half of our fraction done. Bottom half, we have to do the two magnitudes. Square root of 8 squared, 4 squared and 6 squared added together. And then for OB, square root of 12 squared, 6 squared and 0 squared added together. And then we can just shove all of this, three numbers, we can put it all in our formula. 120 divided by the magnitude of 116 times by the magnitude of 180. Again, be very careful how you put this in the calculator. And again, remember, it's not cos theta that was our final answer. It's theta that's our final answer. So we want to do the inverse cos of all of this. Calculator does the work for you. You just got to make sure you put it all in correctly. That will give us 33.85451 or 33.9 degrees to one decimal place. A lot of marks there. The first part alone is probably worth two marks, and then the second part is probably worth four marks. So it's a long and tedious-ish process, but it's virtually the same every single time. Just make sure you listen to what I've said, check its positive direction of these vectors, um, careful with your negatives, do the inverse cost, all these little things, just be careful.